iBonds are a hot topic right now with some people wanting to sell everything and others wanting to buy more. And in this video, we'll discuss the current rates, some strategies for you to earn as much interest as possible, and finally what I'm personally doing with my own bonds. But before we begin, we must talk about the basics of iBonds. These are government issued bonds where you lend money directly to the US Treasury. In return, you get special tax benefits and inflation protection. And let's start off with discussing taxes. The interest you earn is exempt from both state and local taxes. You can also defer your federal ones until you either A, sell the bond, or B, when it matures in 30 years. The best redemption is actually if you use these bonds to pay for higher education. If qualified under IRS Form 8815, you can actually avoid taxes entirely on the accrued interest. And this is perfect if you have a dependent entering college and you meet those income requirements. And these bonds are specifically designed to protect your spending power against inflation. The interest rate they pay is based on two variables, the fixed rate and the semi-annual inflation rate. As the name suggests, the fixed rate is locked in for the entire duration of the bond. It does not change. So if you bought I-bonds in May 2020, through October 2022, the fixed interest rate was 0%. But if you wanna buy them right now, the fixed interest rate is now 0.9%, much higher than before. And to put that in context, we haven't seen fixed rates of 0.9% since 2007, before the Great Recession. That said, it's nothing like the 3% fixed rates that we used to get back in the late 1990s. But by today's standards, 0.9% is still pretty attractive, especially considering that you're guaranteed this payout for the entire life of the bond. On the other hand, the semi-annual inflation rate changes every six months based on the CPI data. If inflation is high, this variable will be large. If inflation is low, this variable will be small. And right now, inflation has come down since its highs in 2022. The inflation rate starting from November 2021 was 3.56%. It did climb to a high of 4.81% last year. But right now, the inflation rate for I-bonds has fallen to 1.69%. And once you have these two variables, we'll calculate the annualized composite rate. This is the interest rate for I-bonds issued from May through October 2023. First off, we have the fixed rate at 0.9%. We'll then multiply the semi-annual inflation rate by two since we're calculating an annualized rate. This gives us 3.38%. Finally, we have a product of the two variables. This is the semi-annual inflation rate times the fixed rate. This gives us 0.015%, a tiny boost or a bump to our overall returns. Next up, we'll add all three numbers together and then we'll get an annualized composite rate of 4.295%. Rounding up gives us the 4.3% that is advertised on Treasury Direct, the official government website that allows you to buy I-bonds. It's also worth noting that 4.3% is the annualized interest rate on new issues for only six months. For example, if you buy these I-bonds in June, these rates will change in December and the last time to lock in a guaranteed 4.3% is October of this year. And the optimal time to purchase these I-bonds is in the last week of the month, ideally two business days before the month ends. And this is because you get the entire month's worth of interest, regardless of whether you bought it on May 1st or May 29th. It's not game-changing amounts of money, but it is a secret hack to earn a bit more interest. But for many of us, we probably started buying I-bonds back in 2021 when inflation was just beginning to heat up and CD rates were basically rock bottom. And if you are an existing I-bond holder, your current rates will look a lot different. For example, if you bought I-bonds from January 2021 through October 2022, your fixed interest rate is 0%. If you bought I-bonds from November 2022 through April 2023, your fixed interest rate is now 0.4%. The semi-annual inflation rate would be the same across all I-bonds at 1.69%. Multiplying it by two gives us the same 3.38% as before for both I-bond holders. 
and the final term will take into account both the fixed rate and the new semi-annual inflation rate. This gives us 0% for I-bonds in the first column and 0.0068% for the second column. So if you were issued bonds from January 2021 through October 2022, your new annualized rate is 3.38% for six months. And if you were issued bonds from November 2022 through April 2023, your new annualized rate is about 3.79% APY. Overall, these are still pretty decent rates, especially considering the tax benefits. If you have a high income or you live in a state like California or New York, the tax equivalent yields could be well over 4%. But you might be saying, hold on, I just watched Eric's last video and there are bank CDs paying over 5% APY. Shouldn't I just sell everything and buy those instead? Well, hold your horses. First off, your money is locked in for the initial 12 months. So for example, if you bought I-bonds in June last year, you can't sell them today. You have to wait until month 13 or June 2023 to actually cash in your bonds. But even then, there is an early withdrawal penalty. If you cash in your bonds within the first five years, you'll lose the last three months worth of interest. And to put that in context, the last six month holding period was offering at least 6.48% APY. That's a lot of money, and it's a higher rate than what most banks currently offer. So that early withdrawal penalty is gonna sting. So if you wanna cash in these bonds today, you might wanna pay attention to this next part. And if you like math, let's dive in. So let's say that you started buying I-bonds back in May 2022 when they were paying 9.62% APY. That's an amazing rate, so you put $10,000 in. What's the best day to redeem these bonds and minimize that early withdrawal penalty? Well, in our first holding period, we have a starting balance of $10,000. Over the course of six months, we earn 9.62% APY. This gives us $481 of interest or a 4.81% total return. In November, our semi-annual inflation rate has changed and we're now earning 6.48% APY. With our starting balance at $10,481, we'll earn just under $340 of interest in the second holding period. Again, this is a 3.24% total return over six months, giving us an ending balance at $10,820. If we cash out our bonds in May 2023 or month 13, we'll lose the last three months worth of interest. This means that we will be penalized $170, bringing our cash out value to $10,650. You lost three months of 6.48% APY, and that's a pretty big penalty. So what's the best move? If you instead cash out your bonds on August 1st, 2023 or month 16, you'll only lose three months of 3.38% APY. The early withdrawal penalty would be just $91, giving you a cash out value of $10,820. This amount is considerably higher than if you were to cash it out today. In other words, you're getting a 1.6% guaranteed return for holding your I-bonds an extra three months. And that's incredibly hard to beat in today's market. And if you bought I-bonds before May 2022, the ideal cash out date in general would be four months into this 3.38% holding period. Another trick is to cash out on the first day of that fourth month. So when you redeem your I-bond, you'll lose the accrued interest for that month. So for our example above, you'll earn the same amount if you sold on August 1st compared to August 28th. Either way, you won't get paid for the month of August and you'll only lose May, June, and July's interest for that early withdrawal penalty. And as for my thoughts, I don't plan on selling any of my existing holdings. I use them as a long-term emergency fund that is automatically adjusted to keep up with inflation. And because I-bonds fulfill that purpose, I'm perfectly happy keeping everything as is. I'm also in my 20s, which actually give I-bonds a unique advantage that I don't think most people talk about here on YouTube. For instance, the economy goes up and down. 
There are years when inflation is high, and there are years when inflation falls. The maximum amount of I-bonds you can purchase each year is $10,000. If you only buy in when inflation rises and cash out when inflation falls, there is a limit to how much you can purchase. You can only earn elevated rates for a relatively small to moderate sum. And I say this because many of my subscribers or even people I've personally met have continually bought into these I-bonds for well over a decade. And some of them even have six figures worth of cash tied up into these government bonds. And when inflation was peaking in 2022, many of them were earning over 10% APY on all of those accrued savings, netting them thousands of dollars in interest each month. That's incredible. And if they had cashed out for whatever reason, they would have only earned a small fraction of that amount. And I think it's worth considering. Inflation will always go up and down, and if you have some I-bonds in the background, you'll also benefit when inflation eventually goes up again. But even though I'm not selling any of my existing bonds, I'm also not buying any more this year. There's just better alternatives that offer higher rates. Another really good option is Public, who are also kindly sponsoring today's video. Public is an investment brokerage that allows you to buy stocks, ETFs, and even treasuries directly on your phone. Plus, they make it incredibly easy to earn high yields. And right now with public.com slash Eric Tang, you can even earn 5.3% APY on government-backed treasury bills. These are fully backed by the US government and you have the added flexibility of no settlement delays and no minimum hold periods. And with these treasury accounts, you can even automatically reinvest your T-bills at maturity. So there's no additional work on your end to continue raking in those high yields. Again, that's public.com slash Eric Tang to learn more. And to throw in a third option, you can even have 21 day cash management bills that offer over 6% APY. These are elevated rates primarily because people are afraid of a government default, and I'll probably discuss these in a more dedicated video sometime in the future, so be sure to subscribe for all future updates. Now for iBond holders who bought back in 2021, there is another option to sell your 0% fixed interest rate bonds and then buy back in. Your semi-annual inflation rate would still be 1.69%, but you would benefit from an elevated 0.9% fixed rate. It is an interesting one to consider, so I'll probably do that in another video to show you that break-even calculation. And finally, I should mention TIPS. This is another treasury security that offers protection against inflation. You earn both a fixed interest rate and your principal goes up and down with inflation and deflation. And right now, five-year TIPS are offering a 1.25% fixed rate. That is a lot higher than the 0.9% fixed rate offered by iBonds right now, so it could be worth considering. That said, tips are a very complex beast, so I'll probably cover that in a future video. So be sure to be on the lookout for that if you wanna learn more. But in the meantime, if you are interested in learning about the best CD rates right now, definitely check out this video right over here. Signing off for now, have a good one.